there are many things that uh, make you age faster, but there is one specific thing that accelerates your aging much more than anything else. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what it is and what to do about it. Do it. All right. So the thing that accelerates your aging the most is obesity. So it may not be a surprise to you. I think, you know, <laughs> we all know, or I mean, some people don't know, but uh, many people, essentially, most people know that being overweight and being obese is not good for your health. And uh, it is, in my opinion, also one of the biggest things that does accelerate your aging. Obesity is linked to a higher risk of overall mortality. An obese person tends to live anywhere from 5 to 20 years less. Being obese increases the risk of diabetes, cardiovascular disease, neurodegeneration, cancer and kidney disease, all of which are one of the top killers in the Western world. Diabetes. So yeah, surprise, surprise, it's not a big surprise. I think uh, that uh, being overweight and obese does have a negative effect on your mortality. And of course, it's also going to make you age biologically faster. So, uh, you know, you will look older if you are more overweight and you tend to look better and younger if you are leaner. So, you know, many people, they tend to have even like a few kilograms of uh, extra weight. Their face tends to be more chubby or, you know, puffed. And that does give them like the aesthetic look as well that they are at least a few years uh, older than they actually are. And vice versa, if you are skinnier or your face is with less body fat, then, um, you know, you have more defined face, then uh, that already makes you look a lot uh, younger than you, uh, you know, actually are. On the flip side, you can also see that losing weight or um, fixing the obesity has a positive effect on mortality and longevity. Bariatric surgery has been found to reduce overall mortality by 30.7% after a 15-year follow-up compared to control subjects who didn't get the surgery. Now, I'm not saying that you should get a bariatric surgery or something like that, uh, but it does point out that uh, yeah, losing the weight and uh, fixing obesity is uh, what has a positive effect on your overall mortality. So this not only applies to being super obese, uh, overweight people who aren't categorized as obese yet, they can also have, uh, let's say, increased risk of mortality. And this 2009 Lancet study uh, did find that uh, you know the lowest mortality in people is around 22.25 uh, BMI. So we can look at this chart that uh, yeah, people with the lowest the risk of mortality were between 22 and 25. Uh, anything above like 27 or something uh, tends to have still, I mean, it's still uh, not a significantly bigger risk, but above uh, 30, that's where you're considered overweight um, or obese, 35, then uh, yeah, your risk of mortality tends to increase significantly. The uh, increased risk of mortality for people with a BMI under 20, uh, that's generally associated with like uh, substance abuse or some sort of other disease that makes you lose a lot of weight rapidly and uh, this is not caused by being underweight necessarily the being the underweight is the uh, like the byproduct of some other disease substance abuse or a drug addiction or something like that so still the best uh, risk for your longevity mortality uh, or the lowest risk is with the BMI between 22 25 maybe 27 at max and definitely you want to have it under 30 48% body fat but the BMI is obviously very flawed you know I who are very lean I don't have any disease I'm um, yeah like low body fat and uh, my BMI is based on the calculations of the BMI like 27 which you know puts me into like overweight category but um, my biological age is 10 years younger I don't have my blood work is perfect and uh, the problem is that you know I have muscle so that tends to uh, misconstrue or you know, change the results because of the increased mass that you have from the muscle mass and we also know that muscle mass is protective against aging and it has a beneficial effect on longevity so uh, just because your BMI is slightly higher because of having muscle mass um, it's not you know, necessarily meaning that uh, you're at a risk of uh, dying prematurely. A much more accurate tool is the waist to hip uh, ratio. And because this will actually tell you, you know, what's your body composition like and with a high waist to hip ratio, it's going to uh, basically mean that you're uh, accumulating this visceral fat that is very harmful. It's much more uh, harmful than the subcutaneous fat under the skin, visceral fat around the organs is you know going to lead to like organ failure and increases the risk of uh, other diseases much more so than the subcutaneous fat so uh, having a high waist to hip ratio is uh, much worse for you and that should be like the 
the thing that you actually measure. And there's also studies finding again that the high waist to hip ratio uh, increases or is associated with a greater mortality from heart failure and uh, yeah, diabetes. Based on the World Health Organization uh, statistics then uh, or recommendations, then uh, if you're a woman, you uh, if you have a waist to hip ratio that uh, is measured, uh, you first uh, measure your um, waist with a circumference which is slightly below the belly button and then you me measure your uh, hip uh, circumference and you divide your waist circumference with the hip circumference so for me my uh, waist is uh, 83 maybe 85 at max and uh, my hips are 100 so i divide that i get a 0 0.83 and if you are a woman then with a waist to hip ratio of uh, 0 0.80 your risk health risk is very low man 0 0.95 and uh, mine was 0 0.83, which is, you know, lower than uh, the lower risk. So, yeah, basically based on that, I don't have any, like, excess visceral fat. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much very low risk, lowest of the lowest almost. Uh, if you're a wo woman, 0 0.81 to 0 0.85 is moderate risk. Man, 0 0.96 to 1 is moderate risk, uh, which means that, you know, it's basically your, your waist is uh, as wide as your hips. And uh, for women, 0 0.86 or higher means you're high risk and man one or higher so naturally you know men generally have uh, narrower hips than women and uh, women also tend to have narrower waist than man men pear shape is natural for women and an apple shape if you become more like an apple not a pear then uh, that's gonna be indicative that you have like some visceral fat and uh, both for men uh, as well like if you have like this apple shape as a man, then it indeed in, like a, this beer belly or pot belly, then that's a sign that, uh, yeah, there's visceral fat there or you just need to lose some weight. Do it. So in conclusion, being obese and being overweight is the biggest thing that accelerates your aging and uh, is also the biggest contributor to your risk of mortality. So you want to achieve a BMI of, you know, at least 27 at most, maybe 28 and definitely below 30. Uh, above 30 is where you start to increase your risk of many uh, diseases and uh, yeah that's you know, relatively easy to solve in a sense that we know how to lose weight it's not uh, rocket science and of course it's subjectively hard or difficult but the information of you know how to do it is um, very simple you just need to follow the right uh, guidelines and recommendations and then applies a lot of you know this consistency as well as some self-control and uh, discipline if you want to learn about how to do this with a sustainable way then check out my book with dr james de nicola antonio the obesity fix but on that thanks for watching this video make sure you click a like subscribe notification below as well my name is team stay optimized stay empowered